This season, Abraham enjoys a good harvest. But how much money can he get for his coffee? Well, for Abraham and for coffee farmers all over the world, this is a complicated question. Okay, let's talk economics. Coffee farmers are paid when people buy their coffee. But what determines how much they're paid? Let's look at the price of coffee. Now when we say the price of coffee, we're not talking about how much you pay for coffee at a store. We're talking about how much farmers get paid for their coffee crop. So the average price of coffee over the last 100 years has been something like $2 a pound. But if we look at the actual prices from year to year, we see something pretty weird. The price is extremely unstable. Why is this? Well, you've probably heard of the idea of supply and demand. Supply meaning how much of a product is available for purchase. Demand meaning how much consumers want it. Economic theory says that the price of something is determined when supply equals demand. But what happens when the supply is always changing? This is what's going on with coffee. While the demand side of coffee is pretty stable because, well, people always want to drink coffee, the supply side of coffee is different. It changes a lot, all the time. And since the supply is unstable, the price is unstable too. When the supply is low, prices go up. When the supply is high, prices fall down. And up and down and up and down. So why does the supply of coffee change around so much? Well, it's pretty complicated, and there are many reasons. For example, take the coffee plant itself. Unlike many crops, the coffee plant grows slowly. In fact, when a farmer plants coffee, he has to wait up to three years before he even gets any fruit. So think about what this means. Say coffee prices rise. Well then, farmers around the world get super excited and rush to plant more coffee so they can get rich. But by the time they can harvest any of this coffee, prices have usually fallen back down. Even worse, now there is suddenly a huge extra supply of coffee, which drives prices down even lower. So then, prices might be too low for farmers to make a living. They lose money and they're forced to abandon their farms. Of course, this now results in a low supply of coffee, which means a return to high prices. So farmers get all excited again and rush to plant more coffee, and the whole thing repeats all over again. This phenomenon is called the coffee cycle, and it helps explain why coffee prices are so unstable. Then there's a whole bunch of other reasons we can look at. For one thing, bad weather can totally wipe out the coffee supply, especially when it's in regions that grow a ton of coffee. In the 50s and 70s, there was severe frost in Latin America, which drastically reduced the world's coffee supply and caused these crazy price spikes. For another thing, politics can affect coffee prices as well. For example, governments of coffee-growing countries can decide that instead of selling all their coffee at once, they're gonna stockpile some of it, which lowers the supply of coffee available in the world at the time and makes prices go up. In the 60s, a group of countries, including Brazil and Colombia, did just that, which is why this price spike happened. This alliance eventually fell apart though, which caused oversupply and made prices crash in the 80s. Now it's important to remember that when we talk about unstable coffee prices, we are talking about more than just money. We are talking about real human suffering. Many coffee farmers are already poor and barely getting by. So when coffee prices fall, it means serious bad news for them. Around 2001, coffee prices plummeted to as low as 40 cents a pound. During this period, millions lost their jobs. Farms were abandoned, families were devastated, and people were malnourished without enough to eat. So you see, being a coffee farmer can be risky business. Because when you depend completely on a crop with such unstable prices, your income and security also become unstable.